Today we're going to dive deep into AWS interview questions, designed to help you prepare whether you're a beginner, an intermediate user, or an experienced professional. Cloud computing is becoming indispensable, and mastering AWS can be your key to succeeding in today's tech landscape. So, to help you ace your AWS interviews, we have curated a list of the top AWS interview questions that cover both beginner and advanced topics. My name is Jasmine, and this channel is all about showing you how to become a highly paid cybersecurity, ethical hacking, or cloud pro fast. Question 1. What is AWS? AWS stands for Amazon Web Services, a cloud platform provided by Amazon that enables users to access distributed IT resources on demand. AWS offers services in three main categories, infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and software as a service. It is a highly scalable and reliable cloud platform that businesses use to build, deploy, and manage applications with minimal setup and instant scalability. Question two, what is EC2? Amazon EC2, or Elastic Compute Cloud, is a cloud-based virtual machine that provides users with OS-level control. With EC2, you can launch instances on demand and manage them with complete control over hardware, operating system, and updates, just as you would with on-premise servers. EC2 is flexible and scalable, making it ideal for running applications that require dynamic computing resources. Question 3. What is VPC? VPC stands for Virtual Private Cloud. A VPC allows users to create isolated cloud networks where they can control their network settings, such as IP addresses, subnets, and gateways. VPCs provide a secure and customizable network infrastructure within AWS, allowing users to establish private IP ranges and control the routing of network traffic for enhanced security. Question 4. What are key pairs? Key pairs in AWS are used to securely access EC2 instances. Public key cryptography is employed to encrypt login information, where the public key is used to encrypt and the private key to decrypt. The private key is held by the user and the public key is stored within AWS. This ensures that only the holder of the private key can access the EC2 instance. Question 5. What is AWS Lambda? AWS Lambda is a serverless compute service that automatically executes code in response to triggers, such as HTTP requests or file uploads. With Lambda, users don't have to manage the underlying infrastructure, and they are billed only for the execution time of their code. It is ideal for applications that scale automatically and require rapid response times without the overhead of managing servers. Question 6. What is the role of buffer in AWS? A buffer in AWS, often referred to in the context of elastic load balancing, ensures that traffic is evenly distributed across multiple AWS instances. Buffers prevent sudden spikes in load from overwhelming systems, allowing components to process incoming requests at a steady rate, improving overall system performance and resilience during traffic bursts. Question 7. Why do we make subnets? Subnets are used to divide larger networks into smaller, more manageable segments. By creating subnets, traffic destined for a particular subnet can stay within that subnet, reducing congestion and improving routing efficiency. Subnets help manage network traffic and enhance security by isolating resources into specific segments. Question 8. What is the maximum number of S3 buckets you can create Currently, AWS allows you to create up to 100 S3 buckets per account by default. However, this limit can be increased by submitting a request to AWS for a quota increase if necessary. Question 9. What are the characteristics of Amazon Cloud Search? Amazon Cloud Search is a managed search service with features like autocomplete, Boolean searches, full-text search, highlighting, term boosting, and range searches. It is used to index and search large amounts of data quickly, making it ideal for applications that require real-time search capabilities. Question 10. What is a hypervisor? 
A hypervisor is software that creates and manages virtual machines by abstracting physical hardware resources. It enables multiple operating systems to run on a single physical machine. Common examples of hypervisors include VMware, Oracle VirtualBox, and Hyper-V. In the AWS context, hypervisors are used to manage EC2 instances. Question 11. Will your standby RDS be launched in the same availability zone as your primary? No, standby RDS instances are launched in different availability zones from the primary instance. This separation ensures that if there is an infrastructure failure in one zone, the standby instance can take over, providing higher availability and fault tolerance. Question 12. How can you send a request to Amazon S3? Requests to Amazon S3 can be made using the REST API or AWS SDK wrapper libraries. The AWS SDK simplifies interactions with the S3 service by offering language-specific APIs, while the REST API provides low-level HTTP-based access to S3 resources. Question 13. What are the various types of load balancers available in EC2? AWS EC2 provides three types of load balancers. Application Load Balancer, ALB, works at the application layer, layer 7, and is designed for advanced routing of HTTP HTTPS requests. Network Load Balancer, NLB, operates at the transport layer, layer 4, and handles large volumes of TCP traffic. Classic Load Balancer, CLB, basic load balancing functionality for EC2 instances in EC2 Classic. Question 14. What are EC2 regions and availability zones? EC2 regions are geographical locations where AWS has data centers, while availability zones are isolated locations within those regions. AZs are designed to be isolated from failures in other zones, ensuring higher availability and fault tolerance. Regions typically have multiple AZs to support disaster recovery and load distribution. Question 15. Explain Elastic Transcoder. Elastic Transcoder is a media transcoding service in AWS that enables you to convert media files into various formats that are suitable for different devices. It is scalable, affordable, and supports a wide variety of input and output formats for audio and video. Question 16. Can S3 be used with EC2 instances? Yes, Amazon S3 can be used in conjunction with EC2 instances, especially for storing large amounts of data that need to be accessed frequently. Developers can store Amazon machine images in S3, and EC2 instances can retrieve these images for booting or running applications. Question 17. What is the difference between spot, on-demand, and reserved instances? Spot instances are unused EC2 instances that can be purchased at reduced prices, but they can be interrupted by AWS if demand increases. On-demand instances are available on a pay-as-you-go basis with no long-term commitment, allowing for flexible scaling. Reserved instances require upfront payment for a one- or three-year term, providing significant cost savings compared to on-demand. Question 18. What is a snapshot in Amazon LightSail? Snapshots are point-in-time backups of block storage drives, EC2 instances, and databases in Amazon LightSail. They can be manually created or set to be created automatically, allowing you to restore resources to the exact state they were in when the snapshot was taken. Question 19. What happens if content is not present at an edge location in CloudFront? If the requested content is not cached at an edge location, CloudFront retrieves the content from the origin server, serves it to the user, and then caches it at the edge location for future requests. Question 20. Can the private IP address of an EC2 instance be changed while it is running? No. The private IP address of an EC2 instance cannot be changed while it is running. It is assigned at launch and remains attached to the instance for the duration of its life. Question 21. What is an elastic IP in AWS? An elastic IP is a static public IPv4 address designed for dynamic cloud computing. 
In AWS, Elastic IPs are used to enable communication with the Internet. Unlike standard IPs, which can change if an instance is stopped or restarted, Elastic IPs remain constant. You can remap an Elastic IP to another instance in your account if an instance fails, making it highly useful for fault-tolerant applications. Elastic IPs also allow you to associate multiple instances with a single IP, ensuring uninterrupted access. Question 22. Explain auto-scaling in AWS. Auto-scaling is a service that automatically adjusts the number of EC2 instances in your application to ensure you always have the right amount of capacity to handle the current traffic demands. You can define scaling policies that specify when to launch or terminate instances based on metrics such as CPU utilization or request rate. Question 23. What is AWS Elastic Beanstalk? Elastic Beanstalk is a platform as a service offering from AWS that allows you to quickly deploy and manage applications in the cloud without worrying about the underlying infrastructure. You simply upload your code and Elastic Beanstalk automatically handles capacity provisioning, load balancing, auto-scaling, and health monitoring. It supports popular programming languages such as Java, .NET, PHP, Node.js, Python, Ruby, and Go. Question 24. What is the purpose of AWS Route 53? AWS Route 53 is a scalable domain name system web service that translates human-readable domain names like example.com into machine-readable IP addresses like 192.0.2.1. Route 53 is designed to route end users to internet applications by directing DNS queries to the appropriate AWS resources. It offers several features, including domain registration, DNS health checks, traffic routing, and failover support. Question 25. What is Amazon CloudWatch? Amazon CloudWatch is a monitoring and management service for AWS resources and applications. It provides metrics and logs that allow you to track resource utilization, system performance, and application behavior in near real time. CloudWatch can monitor EC2 instances, RDS databases, Lambda functions, and other AWS services. Question 26. How do you secure data at rest in S3? To secure data at rest in Amazon S3, AWS offers several encryption options. These include SSE S3, server-side encryption with Amazon S3 managed keys. Amazon S3 automatically encrypts your data using 256-bit AES encryption and manages the encryption keys for you. SSE KMS, server-side encryption with AWS Key Management Service. You can manage the encryption keys using AWS KMS, offering additional control and auditing options. SSEC, server-side encryption with customer-provided keys. You supply your own encryption keys, and AWS S3 uses them to encrypt and decrypt your data. In addition to encryption, you can use bucket policies, IAM roles, and access control lists to control who can access your S3 data. Question 27. What is Amazon Redshift? Amazon Redshift is a fully managed, petabyte-scale data warehouse service in the cloud. Redshift is designed for running complex queries on large datasets and can integrate with popular business intelligence tools. It uses columnar storage and advanced compression to improve query performance and reduce storage costs. Redshift is ideal for analytics workloads that require fast performance over massive datasets. Question 28. Explain the concept of IAM policies. IAM policies are JSON documents that define permissions for AWS resources. Policies can be attached to IAM users, groups, or roles, specifying what actions are allowed or denied for particular services. For example, a policy can allow a user to start an EC2 instance but prevent them from terminating it. Policies are highly customizable and allow fine-grained access control across AWS services. Question 29. What is AWS Glue? AWS Glue is a fully managed extract, transform, and load service that makes it easy to prepare and load data for analytics. Glue simplifies the process of combining data from multiple sources, transforming it into a usable format, 
and then loading it into a destination like Amazon S3, Redshift, or an RDS database. Glue automatically generates ETL code and provides a data catalog that helps you organize and discover datasets. The service is highly scalable, can handle both batch and streaming data, and is widely used in data lake architectures. Question 30. What is CloudFormation? CloudFormation is an AWS service that helps you model and set up your AWS resources using a JSON or YAML template. It allows you to define your cloud infrastructure as code, meaning you can version, review, and automate the creation of resources like EC2 instances, VPCs, and RDS databases. With CloudFormation, you can deploy a consistent and repeatable infrastructure across multiple environments. The service also supports updates and rollback capabilities, ensuring that changes can be deployed safely without impacting live systems. As we've covered in these 30 AWS interview questions and answers, mastering AWS is not just about understanding the platform's services, but also knowing how to apply them to real-world scenarios. Whether you're just starting out, advancing through your cloud journey, or preparing for more specialized roles, Understanding these concepts will help you stand out in interviews and succeed in your career. AWS continues to be one of the leading cloud platforms, and by staying informed and practicing these types of questions, you'll be better prepared to tackle any challenges that come your way. Good luck with your AWS journey, and remember, practice makes perfect. Check out the video on the right for more content to help you develop your IT career.